We're beginning section 2.1 covering relations and functions. There's uh, several objectives in this particular section. Uh, this particular video is just going to cover objective one, being able to express an inequality in interval notation. Okay. Uh, interval notation is just a different or alternative way of writing inequalities. An interval notation always represents um, a solution set stretching from one number to a second number, okay? And there's a couple rules that we follow for interval notation. The first is that you always put your smaller number on the left, followed by a comma, and then your larger number on the right, okay? Now, if you want to include either of those numbers in your solution set, you're going to put a bracket next to it. But if you don't want to include it, you're going to put a parenthesis next to it. So bracket implies including, parentheses implies not including. Okay, so let's just run through several examples here. I have a solution set of numbers graphed on the left hand side. We're going to come up with an inequality to represent uh, the solution set, and then we'll show you the corresponding interval notation to match it. All right. So the first solution set is any number between negative 2 and 3, including 3, but not including the negative 2, okay? Um, that's because the negative 2 has an open uh, circle on it. However, the 3 has a solid circle, all right? So as an inequality, that would simply look like negative 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3, okay? All right, so this in interval notation would look as follows. I'm going to put a parenthesis to begin followed by a negative 2. And the reason I put a parenthesis is because the negative 2 is not actually part of the solution set. I'll follow that with a comma, then 3 with a bracket next to it. And the bracket implies that 3 is included. All right. Next example, we have any number larger than negative 1, where x is greater than negative 1. In interval notation, you're going to start with a parenthesis, followed by your negative 1, and then it appears like we don't have a second number to use here, but the inequality is implying that we're talking about any number um, from negative 1 all the way up to infinitely large numbers, right? So I'll put a comma and then an infinity symbol to close off the interval. And I put a parenthesis next to that. You always put parentheses next to infinity or negative infinity, never a bracket. Uh, the reasoning there is that you can never actually get to the number infinity or to negative infinity, all right? Next solution is pretty similar. Um, this time it's any number um, smaller or equal to 1. X is less than or equal to 1. Um, so in this case, the smaller value for interval notation would be negative infinity. So I'm going to begin with a parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, 1, with a bracket to close it off. Okay, next we have a solution set that has two intervals to it, okay? In inequality notation, the solution set would be x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than 2. So the interval notation that corresponds to this will actually have two intervals. The first will uh, be from negative infinity to negative 1, where you're including negative 1. And then instead of writing the word or, you're going to put a, a fancy u, okay? And that u just stands for union. Remember, when we covered compound inequalities, we often describe the or compound inequalities as unions, okay? So or and the, the u here are one and the same. Our second interval will begin with a parenthesis followed by a 2, comma, up to infinity. Okay. 
Next solution sets a very unique one. Uh, basically, with the way the graph is there, you're saying your solution is any number except for negative one. So best way of writing that as an inequality would be x cannot equal negative one. For interval notation, you're actually going to write this as two separate intervals, both which don't include the value of negative one. So the first interval would be from negative infinity to negative one. Notice I'm putting a parenthesis on negative one. Then I'll do a union again, parenthesis, negative one to infinity. So notice both of those intervals, you're not including the value of negative one. All right, and then the last solution set there covers all real numbers. Don't have a way of writing that as an inequality other than we'll just write the all real number symbol. And for interval notation, we can say that our solution stretches from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is how you're going to write all real numbers in interval notation.